Hey, it's Sam Jim Rakai here, and spoilers for chapter 1082 of One Piece just dropped, which I don't super understand because I thought it was going to be a break week, so I don't know if we're getting a chapter this weekend or if we're getting it next weekend and these are just early. Maybe you can clear that up for me in the comments. I, it would be much appreciated. And it seems like, the, unlike the last few chapters, this chapter seems to have nothing to do with the last few scenes we've gotten at Hachinosu. And it seems like we're kind of going the throwback route and we're kind of seeing what exactly is going on at the moment with the Cross Guild organization. And supposedly the chapter title is Let's Go Take It. It looks like the chapter starts off with Hina arriving to talk to Sengoku and Saru. And they all kind of seem to be realizing that Garp has gone rogue to save Kobe at Hachinosu Island from Blackbeard. We then cut to the Cross Guild and their dealings. And that's actually something very interesting about this chapter is it almost exactly mirrors a combination of chapter 1057 and chapter 1058. When we start at the Marine headquarters, then we jump to the Cross Guild and their dealings and the island that they're on, and then it jumped back to the Revolutionary Armies. That's the exact same pacing and order that this chapter seems to go in. And it sounds like they're giving out a bounty to the family of the pirate or person that killed T-Bone the this this marine here and apparently they will join cross guild and buggy will protect him from the marines it also sounds like we get a pretty funny looking new ship for the cross guild that mohawk and crocodile are not too happy that it's clown themed and it's no surprise to all of us to learn that crocodile essentially wants to use the cross guild organization to complete his original utopia plan the spoilers say that he wants to create a utopia as a military nation that cannot be threatened by any single force in the one piece world and then i guess mahawk gives him some advice about they need more power and it's really funny to me it kind of just seems like i know this is gonna piss a lot of people off but mahawk really does seem like kind of a follower we get the idea that he was kind of on his own beforehand and doing all this stuff just you know, whatever he felt like doing pre-time skip. But of course, even then, we kind of get the hint and are told that he's a dog for the Marines and is a privateer for the world government, so to speak, being part of the Suchibaki, which really, to me, wasn't really all that free. And then, of course, as soon as that was disassembled, he immediately joined a new crew. But he kept reporting back to Shanks about things that he had seen. He literally shows up at every single meeting that the Marines call of the Suchibaki. And he even showed up at Marine Ford. So it's pretty much like I, I know Mohawk and there's all these ideas of him having these crazy powers and will but he really kind of follows orders literally whenever the opportunity arises and I know that people are going to bring up that every single time that Mohawk has seemed to follow these orders that coincide with his own desires and something but man it's really amazing to me how many of his desires seem to line up with what orders he's received kind of like how a sword cuts what the wielder wants it to but we'll just leave it at that for now and it sounds like Buggy is going to get the shine in this chapter because he's immediately against Crocodile's entire utopia plan and is screaming, that's not what real pirates do. And I guess we're treated to a flashback of right after Roger's execution, Buggy and Shanks and what they were actually arguing about. And Buggy was upset that Shanks was not going to go follow in Roger's footsteps and go after the One Piece treasure. Which to me, it's very telling that this guy who from the very first chapter in Shanks that we've always kind of viewed as the ultimate pirate really and truthfully has not been doing piratey things and Buggy seems to remind us here what did we all start to be pirates for and I agree we all started this journey reading on the first page what's this one piece treasure and we all kind of enter the story understanding that to be the king of pirates you needed to find this treasure so every single pirate essentially that's not doing that in my eyes as a reader from when I was 11 years old, they're not a real pirate. Or at least they are not the kind of pirate that I'm reading the story about. Obviously, there's lots of cool things and lore and stuff we're learning with these guys. But when it comes down to it, there is something fundamentally wrong, it seems like, with some of these characters that are not specifically going after the One Piece treasure. And it does really make me question why exactly Shanks is going after it now. Now, I have future videos and other videos kind of talking about some hidden plans around that because I, I literally think he was kind of waiting for Luffy to be able to grab it for him. But we'll get to that in other videos. And the flashback ends and comes back to present with Buggy asking Crocodile and Mahawk if they've heard about how Shanks is on the move as well. So pretty much everyone seems to know that he's been docile for a number of years. Buggy then decides, of course, that he too wants to become the Pirate King. He has the same title and same recognition, you know, in, in name value at least, face value at least, in the One Piece world, so he might as well try. 
And in true pirate fashion, Buggy decides that they don't really need to battle Red Hair or Blackbeard or Straw Hat. They just need to find the One Piece treasure first. It's a battle of treasure. I mean, it sounds like Buggy somehow steals a megaphone or a microphone from Crocodile and speaks to the entirety of the cross guild pirates that are working under them and says, Are you satisfied with your current lives? Do you, re- do you need to be reminded of the reason you went out to sea in the first place? The day has arrived. Let's go take the One Piece. And everyone seems to be on board with Buggy, much to Crocodile and Mahark's dismay. And it sounds like they are shocked and furious. And then it sounds like the end of the chapter kind of has the most exciting reveals, where we kind of, we, I think we all kind of knew, but now we get confirmation that Sabo actually did not die at that Lulesia Kingdom's attack when Eam destroyed it, and that he was actually on a ship taking some of the citizens who wanted to join the Revolutionary Army with him, and that's how they were able to escape the uh, attack. So not as exciting as some of my ideas and some of the other ones around the community, but either way, he's still alive. And it sounds like he enters a room with Dragon and ends the chapter by saying, I'm going to tell you the entire truth about what happened at Mary Joa. And then the spoilers say that there is no break next week, so I'm not sure if that's we get the chapter next weekend and then the next weekend we get another one. Uh, If you know, please clear it up for me in the comments. Uh, If you've watched this long, thank you so, so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe the video and my, my channel and all that stuff. We just passed 500 subscribers, which is so cool. Thank you so much. And let me know in the comments if you like these kind of spoiler videos and if you want more quicker updates like these ones instead of chapter reviews or, you know, the day of the spoilers and stuff like that. Uh, My name is Amgen Rakai and I will talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.